an AEW star could be on her way out of the company. Fightful reported overnight that Jade Cargill is believed to be finishing up with AEW. Sources within both AEW and WWE told Fightful that they believe Jade Cargill is on her way to WWE. After being taken away from AEW for nearly four months, Jade Cargill returned to television on Collision last Saturday. That set up a TBS championship match between Chris Statlander and Cargill that was taped on Wednesday night and will air on this Friday's episode of Rampage. Warning, the next part of this is a spoiler. At the Rampage tapings, Cargill lost clean to Statlander. Dave Meltzer noted on Wrestling Observer Radio that fans who attended the tapings felt like Cargill was saying her farewell to AEW. Cargill waved to the crowd like she was leaving and she and Statlander hugged. It was confirmed on Wrestling Observer Radio that the belief is Jade is going to WWE. Jade made her in-ring debut in 2021 by teaming with NBA legend Shaquille O'Neal on an episode of AEW Dynamite. They defeated the team of Cody Rhodes and Red Velvet. Jade became AEW's inaugural TBS champion in 2022. She held the title for more than 500 days until losing it to Chris Statlander at Double or Nothing this May. Matt Riddle is reportedly expected back in WWE shortly. Matt Riddle missed Monday's edition of Raw after having been involved in an incident at JFK Airport on Sunday. However, it was later said that Riddle was removed from the show because of an inner ear infection and bronchitis rather than anything to do with what happened at the airport. According to a report from PW Insider, Riddle is expected to return to the company on Monday for Raw. Port Authority officers allege Riddle was disruptive and heavily intoxicated while transferring flights on Sunday. Riddle posted to Instagram accusing one of the officers of sexual assault as well. WWE and the Port Authority are both said to have launched internal investigations into the matter. Four title matches are official for AEW Dynamite Grand Slam on Wednesday, September 20th at Arthur Ashe Stadium in Queens, New York. MJF will defend the AEW World Championship against Grand Slam World Title Eliminator Tournament winner Samoa Joe next week. Joe defeated Roderick Strong in the tournament finals on Wednesday's Dynamite. The Women's World Championship will be on the line at Dynamite Grand Slam with Soraya defending the title against Tony Storm. Tony Storm won a four-way match on Wednesday's Dynamite to earn the title shot. International champion John Moxley is also set for a title defense at Dynamite Grand Slam against top contender Ray Phoenix. Also official for Dynamite Grand Slam, Claudio Castagnoli and Eddie Kingston will square off in a title versus title match with two belts at stake. As Castagnoli holds the Ring of Honor World Championship and Kingston is the New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong Openweight Champion. In addition to the four title belts, Chris Jericho vs. Sammy Guevara is also set for Arthur Ashe Stadium. Hangman Page and Swerve Strickland will be meeting in Seattle. After Page defeated Brian Cage on Wednesday's Dynamite, Page called out Swerve, who was standing at the entrance and talked about how Swerve said he wanted his spot, yet he had Cage fight his battle. Swerve says he will pick where their fight happens and chose Wrestle Dream which will take place in Swerve's hometown of Seattle on October 1st. The feud between Paige and Strickland started on last week's Dynamite as Paige was cutting a promo. Swerve interrupted Paige and told him he was coming for a spot that he acted like he didn't want. Paige walked away, but after Swerve brought up his family, he ran to the ring to attack Strickland, but was laid out by Cage. Brian Danielson has clarified some of the comments he made on AEW Collision about his in-ring future. Danielson cut a promo on Saturday's show and said he promised promised his six-year-old daughter he would start finishing up his career when she turned seven next May. He recently told Sports Illustrated that means potentially closing up shop next summer. However, Danielson does not believe he'll ever truly retire for good. He expanded on what his in-ring future could look like, including the possibility of him going years between matches, saying, I don't think I'll ever reach a point where I declare I'm absolutely done. I want the ability to show up when I want to show up. Danielson also noted that his AEW contract expires shortly after his daughter's birthday. There is still much Danielson wants to accomplish with his in-ring career. He mentioned missing All In at Wembley Stadium recently and wanting to work at the event next year. Danielson also noted that he always wanted to wrestle for Defy in his hometown as well. Another factor playing into Danielson's decision is the rate of injuries he has suffered as of late, saying, 
There is a realization that over the past year, I'm getting hurt after every big match I have. That's a sign. I love wrestling, but I do not want to wrestle at the expense of my long-term health. I did the Iron Man match with Max, and then I didn't wrestle again until Anarchy in the Arena, and even that was a lot of smoke and mirrors. Then I wrestle Okada and I break my arm. The injuries are starting to pile up. At what point is that worth the risk? Especially when my kids want and need me at home. Danielson's next big match is scheduled for October 1st in Seattle's Climate Pledge Arena at AEW Wrestle Dream. He will wrestle Zack Sabre Jr. on the show. Brian Danielson spoke to SI Fan Nation about how CM Punk's departure could affect the AEW roster, saying, In any job when you lose somebody who's very important or you lose somebody you really like working with, that's hard. But everyone keeps doing the job. And anytime there is a loss or controversy or struggle inside an organization, it's a chance to bring people closer. It's also a chance to divide people. So you have this thing where you can use struggle to make your life worse, or you can use struggle to make your life better. When I lost my father, I came out on the backside. I was worse, struggling with my depression. I've come out of it better. So how you approach something and how you learn from something, that's what makes the difference. Tuesday night's WWE NXT averaged 850,000 viewers on the USA Network, up 26.3% from last week. It's the seventh highest audience total in the history of the show and the best viewership since October 28, 2020. NXT drew a .26 rating in the 18 of 49 demo. That's up 44.4% from last week and ties the best rating the show has done in the category since December 18, 2019. It's the sixth highest rating in the history of the show. The episode was headlined by Becky Lynch returning to NXT and winning the NXT Women's Championship from Tiffany Stratton. Becky Lynch said she wants to be a fighting champion and represent NXT. WrestleNomics reports that the eight-minute overrun featuring the end of Becky Lynch and Tiffany Stratton's title match averaged over one million viewers. And in a follow-up from yesterday's video, Dana White responded to a statement that UFC executive Lawrence Epstein made about wanting to get to a point where every UFC fan is a WWE fan and every WWE fan is a UFC fan. Dana White said, Lawrence, I love you. One of the dumbest statements of all time. I don't even know what to say to that. There is some crossover. Some people like WWE. Some people like UFC. Some people like both. I don't think there is ever going to be a day where we turn every UFC fan to a WWE fan or every WWE fan to a UFC fan. What's beautiful about the synergy between these two fan bases is that they are very completely opposite. There is very little crossover. And again, maybe he was misquoted. I hope that was the case because I could not disagree with him more. And that's a wrap for this episode of The Latest. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And if you missed our previous episode, you can watch now by clicking on the screen. Plus, don't forget to subscribe.